2019 Nike Cross Nationals here with Craig Dunn, head coach at Dana Hills High School. This weekend for club purposes, Dana Point, the team finished eighth this year at Nationals, has an all-time best of third place here, and a good history here at NXN. Uh, you guys also have a good history during the regular season, during the CF season of being phenomenal. This year was no different. Uh, from my vantage point, it looked like some of the teams in Division One were a little bit inconsistent partway through the season. And the team that really rose and was on the right trend at the end were you guys, in a sense. How did this year go for you guys, in your opinion? You know, it was it was a great year in the end. They, they pinpointed State as their focus meet for the year, and we wanted to do well at State, but we weren't too worried about it. We just knew that our meet that we were focused on was a state meet, and fortunate for us, we had a great showing there. Do you guys feel now in the NXN era, where the very best teams of which Dana Point is one of Dana Hills is one of them, you have that big carrot at the end of the season. Do you find yourself in recent years ch changing how you approach your calendar, knowing that more often than not the big goal is NXN? You know, we'd always, always want to come to NXN. It's a, it's a great privilege to be here to compete against the best of the best and experience the event that Nike offers to us. Uh, but at the end of the day, the statement is our biggest focus. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, you know, then once, you know, like this year, once we made nationals, we told them, hey, enjoy today. Tomorrow we get back to work because we're never going to go to a meet just happy to be there. You mentioned about state being the biggest focus. How important is section finals to you in, in the sense that, I mean, do you find yourself sometimes sacrificing anything at all at the section finals level to get ready for state? Or is it a case of going as hard as you can, as good as, as well as you can at CF finals and holding it for one more week and maybe even two? In the past, we've done that. This year, we took a different approach and we did not put as much emphasis on CF Southern, uh, Southern section finals. And we knew we were gonna run hard, but we didn't put the whole mental aspect of getting the kids pumped up to go out there and perform at their absolute best. We rolled the dice and we just got to make it to state and that's where we'll show our cards. So the division appeared to be in Southern Section 8 deep this year. Obviously, only 7-1-9. You mentioned you were rolling the dice a little bit. Was there much concern, or was it a case of you thought maybe it's only 7 deep, the division, or were you hearing inside information where maybe you thought someone would not be able to? I mean, was it, how much of a risk was it, in your opinion? To me, not a big risk. I knew what my kids were capable of. I've seen them work out every day. I know their, their, their abilities. and. I know that there's been a lot of fluctuation in the, the division about where teams have ranked anywhere from second to eighth. To, and uh, the research I did, I didn't see a whole lot of concern that these teams were trending in the right direction. Right. So we weren't as concerned. Now, if I can, not to put you on the spot, but why do you think that is? Why do you think that some teams were having difficulty being consistent? Do you think it was because it was so competitive that teams were probably pounding a bit too much. And, I mean, what, what do you think? Well, you know, it's funny this year, I, it was hard to get a lot of research on teams because a lot of teams didn't compete too well or too often against top competition. Yep. And so they do well in a small meet, but you can't judge a small meet to me on a, on a state or CIF type atmosphere. And so, uh, you know, you see these teams that posted something great at, at a dual meet or a league finals where, okay, well that's there, but what did you do at, if you did a major meet, whether it be Woodbridge or Clovis or something like that, how did you perform there? And uh, in my personal opinion, like I said, once again, I felt confident with our guys stepping on the line with anybody else in Division Two, with the exception of Newberry Park. I know over the years, just in knowing you when you've been an assistant and now head coach, you're very uh, heavily invested in basically having strong relationships with the kids. I mean, it's, it's a passionate thing, it's a relationship thing, it's, it's very meaningful. Uh, this year's group, you were, it seemed like you were pretty close to them. You, it was a nice family. You know, uh, we just had our banquet last Tuesday, and at the banquet I talked about, you know, I, I call them my boys because to me they, they are my family. You know, I, I spend a lot of time with them, my family spends time with them, and I'd be lying if I didn't say I want to win everything. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we want these boys that come in as freshmen to leave as better young men because of what they did with us. Mm -hmm. As far as the group, if something is going wrong within the program, you know, if kids aren't cutting it in terms of the commitment, is that something that, more often than not, it's something that you have to go ahead and be the bad guy? Is it sometimes, is it your seniors, your captains? How does that usually happen in your program? You know, we like to trust the captains at first, and this year we had some great leaders. You know, Carrick Denker, being our senior captain, was phenomenal. Um, we had a couple issues this year, and, you know, he 
talk to me about it, you say, okay, we'll care to you and take care of it. It's like, no, let me handle it. If I can't do it, I'll come back to you. And he handled it, we talked a little more. He's like, coach, maybe you might have to get involved, give me one more try. And then things turned around and the issue was gone. And now it's his leadership and his role uh, being who he was on this team and how important he was to this team. Over the years, a long tradition, I think it still continues as far as summertime, is it pronounced Halama? Yes. The Halama trip. And it's not your typical altitude in the mountains. It's basically, if I can describe it right, basically beachside in a sense. And you guys are, it's, I mean, explain it in your own words and why there as opposed to the traditional up in the mountains and so forth. Okay, well, it's a tradition that goes back 40 plus years that Tim wow. Butler originally started with his team. And it's funny because we live at the beach. That's mm -hmm. where we live. Right. And yet we drive three hours north to go camp on the beach. Uh, the great thing about it, though, is there's no cell phone, no Wi-Fi. That's right. We're secluded. We're 50 miles off the main highway, and uh, the kids are forced to just be with each other. You know, obviously they work hard, and that's something that every team does wherever they go. But they're forced to be around each other and just enjoy each other, play games, converse, interact. You know, they're not texting or playing video games. They're, they're with each other, and uh, that's a good time together. Let me ask you this, and this might tie into, you know, you have a great relationship with the athletes, so maybe this isn't as much of a problem. Now, I mean, you've been coaching for, for a while, even though you look quite young, you've been coaching for quite a bit, you said. Times have changed. You've got kids with more options and social media and the whole bit. Yet it seems like over the long haul, Dana Hills has always been able to maintain a high level of program. How do you, do you, have you seen kids change over the years or not really? The last decade has been, there's been a lot of change. Mm -hmm. You know, um, society itself with, with social media and technology has helped change it, but also the way I don't want to say their parents parent their kids, but the attitude is definitely a little different than it used to be where 10, 15 years ago, these kids were running hard, working hard, because that's what was instilled in them, and they wanted to try to help themselves get into college with it. With it. Nowadays, kids will look at me, oh, my parents will pay for my education, I don't have to worry about that. Right. Um, the one thing I think we've done that's helped us is we've stayed consistent with holding kids accountable to a standard. It doesn't matter whether it's showing up on time for practice or finishing every workout, we just hold them accountable every day that we don't let them get away with little things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just almost like wrapping up in a sense. Uh, you've been coaching, you, say, you, you mentioned for quite a while now. How many years now? 20 years. 20 years. Have you, were you fortunate enough that when you started coaching, you were pretty much blessed to have a pretty good approach, how you were going to do things? I, I know Tim Butler was a big part of that as well, but has there been anything major that has changed in your philosophy, major, since you started coaching? You know, you mentioned Tim Butler. He was my high school coach because I went to Danny Hills and he coached me for four years. Um, I grew up without a dad and he was kind of my father figure in high school. And I, I joke around without him. I, you know, he kept me out of jail basically. I'd laugh. And, uh, <laughs> I was, it wasn't that bad. But um, it wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I realized what the program really did for me. Wow. You know, it wasn't just about getting out there running and winning things. It was about um, commitment. It was about dedication. It was about work ethic. And, sacrifice and all the things that I learned from the program that, you know, with Coach Butler and everything that he taught me, that I, I could appreciate what him and the running did for me. And so getting back involved with running, I knew that I was a part of a program that was already successful and I wanted to help continue that, but I also wanted to give back to these kids what I got from it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, over the years you learn a lot. I mean, I'm still learning and I'll always continue to learn. But uh, I think over the years the biggest thing that's changed for me is just my passion to help these young men become great men is something I take a lot of pride in. This probably then answers my next question, my last question. Uh, whenever I see young coaches that start to build a family, you know, the priorities change and such, and sometimes some of them get out of coaching. You mentioned the, the, the great relationship and, and, you know, the strong passion you have for your kids. So when I see your kids growing up, I mean, I see a very healthy family, a very supportive wife. But part of me is always concerned, like, oh, is he going to get out of coaching? Do you, do you see yourself in, in the near term still coaching, or is it tougher? You know, it's tougher, but, you know, once again, you, my wife is very supportive and very blessed. She actually coached with me for a while, so she gets what I do. And the one thing we talked about was that I always had to keep her involved, meaning talk about the kids to her so she knows who they are. And she has an understanding of why I feel certain ways about certain kids and what I'm doing at practice. So we talk on a daily basis about what I'm doing and it helps her feel involved and allows her to, to understand what I'm doing and let me be who I am and she's very proud of what I do.
All right. Well, Craig Dunn, once again, a great leadership within the program, great tradition spanning decades over at Dana Hills High School. And this year, another great season, eighth at Nike Cross Nationals. Thank you.